Preparing for a job in robotics field, it's a complex landscape, but having right skills and mindset can make all the difference. Let's delve into some common dilemmas, problem solving procedures and job acquisition tactics. Let's understand the dilemma through Ross example. Ross is open source and a lot of people work is also open source built on Ross. So you can directly get the code, get the repository, run it and you might feel that now you understand everything. But running a simulation or someone else's repository might give you a sense of accomplishment. But that does not necessarily mean that you understand every single aspect of this simulation. Here's another interesting stats. Udemy reported completion rate is only 30% and an average of 70% of students don't even start the course they enrolled in. Because in my experience, people get the code and they just run it and they don't want to understand every single thing. But it is essential to understand underlying principles and not just the results. The question is how to solve these dilemmas. The answer is problem solving explanation. As I was once interviewed by a company for senior robotics engineer role and they asked me for a relevant project for the product they were working on. I'd explained them the project in 15 to 20 minutes and they kept on asking me questions for the next one and a half hour about the same project that I explained and literally it took one to two hours to explain the problem solving techniques I used because it was a big project eight to nine months a real robot and companies are only interested in the practices that you do for solving your problems during making the projects and they are very valuable for the company because they want to check if this candidate has a capabilities of solving the problem and ideas and the way he generated the ideas matter to the company. So let's take an example of problem solving procedure for robotic simulation. Let's say we want to move the robot to a specific location through the joint angles and we don't know the end effector point. We have the angles for the joints. First we download the robot and we bring in the simulation and the robot keeps on following. Now we understand that in ROS that happens because of the ROS2 controllers and the dynamics. So we solve that problem by adding dynamics first and then all of the joint controllers and then we write a controller configuration file then include all of these things into URDF and then launch the robot then stands perfectly in the simulation. We write a node for joint trajectory controller. We give the name of the topic and the joints providing the value, send it to the robot and the robot moves perfectly. So in this whole process, you need to understand that for joints to move on your commands, you need ROS2 controllers. So you fix controllers to it. Problem solving procedure here is what type of controller you are using and why. Then the second one is making the robot move smoothly. Joint trajectory controller is decided in this case. And given that you must understand the ROS workflow, ROS file system and all the structure. The next step is integration and deploying, which means that once the whole simulation or the robotic project is complete, you build the pipelines for deploying it to scale the whole process or integrate certain aspects into your project. But for all of this, you need to be really good at understanding how the structure has been built. In ROS, let's take an example of dockerizing. We build the complete system and we dockerize it. Then we utilize this docker into a Linux and we deploy that on a Linux machine and a Windows machine. In both of the scenarios, it is working the same simulation, but we dockerize it. That's why we are able to deploy it easily. Otherwise, we have to do a lot of things to make it work on Windows if built on Linux. Similarly, working on a project requires a lot of libraries to be involved and one should be really good at integrating good libraries into their projects and keeping the version control. And specifically, when we are working with ROS, the easiest integration is through CMake list. If you are building your own libraries, you put it in the CMake list, compile it. If it is able to find it, then it is included in your project. There are two practices in developing the projects that make you stand out, even if it is hardware or software. And those are version control and testing. So what is version control? What notion does version control gives? Company looks at it in the form of collaboration aspect of the person because it saves the history of what you are doing. And so the file sharing between multiple people get easy and you understand that giving files to the other and make them collaborate on these files or feature or an aspect makes you a good person in technical sense for the team. So they prefer you upon this. GitHub, GitLab and other platforms are there for version control, understanding and implementing your software there. 
Now the next one is testing, which shows and puts the fact that this guy knows what he has built. Now he is writing the code for testing it and you write the test code or you write the test based on the company's requirement, based on the company's interest. That is never ending process, but you have to test and verify in a limited time. But these two aspects are plus points for beginners and they make you stand out in a job application when you are explaining your project and when you are explaining your tests and the version control techniques that you have built for any project that you have done earlier. Securing a job in robotics is not just about technical skills. For example, a company working on surgical robots, they might prefer someone with understanding of FDA regulations of class A device or some background in biomechanics. Conversely, on the other hand, there might be a startup working on agricultural robots might value adaptability and cultural fit over a specific experience in agricultural robot. So it varies upon the company's direction, their leadership, and you have to understand or get a basic sense what they are trying, what they have done already, what their practices it, then you apply accordingly. So in a nutshell, preparing for a job in robotics field, specifically software side, is a multifaceted problem. And it is not just running simulation, adding libraries, or just even running ROS and saying, I know all of the robotics. So you have to be really open to this and open to suggestions, ask the industry leaders, go to the workshops, go to the expos and understand how they are building their whole product and what was the role that I was applying. You can also find out a lot of people as robotics engineer and ask them question, can you help me? give me consultancy how can i become uh, what you are right now there are a lot of consultants available you can ask them and you can get the path work upon the path and get the job